Welcome back to the CG Bros. This is Brother Damien, and this is part two in the series on creating a complex and very cool end class simulation using any polygonal object. Now in part one, we left off after setting up our end cloth object and creating a volume access field to drive the simulation. Let's go ahead and continue on. Now we've rotated our volume access field 45 degrees, and now I'll place it at one corner of the end cloth object and then set a keyframe by highlighting the translate channels and right clicking and setting a key on selected. I'll also come down here and turn on auto keyframe. And I'll hit the back one frame button to go to the end of the timeline and move the volume access field to the opposite corner of the end cloth object. Now this will move the volume field through the end cloth object from one corner to the other over the duration of the timeline. Now I'll do a play blast of the simulation so we can see how this is looking. So I'll pause it and come back when it's done. Okay, that took about 12 minutes on my i7 laptop. Let's go ahead and play it back. I'm really happy with the way this is coming along. And we've got cool turbulence and upward force acting on the end cloth. Now you might be noticing though that the noise pattern on the leading edge is looking a little bit static and hard from an aesthetic point of view. That's because we haven't animated it yet. Let's go ahead and take care of that right now with a quick animation expression. Now don't be afraid of expressions. They're your friend. They can save you countless hours of manipulating keyframes because of their procedural function. Now you set the rule and then the expression does the rest. No need to keyframe. Let's go ahead and do this on the turbulence offset. Now the turbulence offset moves the turbulence grid through space on the axis that we animate. Now in the first channel, right click and create a new expression and name it something meaningful. I'm going to go ahead and name mine Vol Freak Offset. Now copy Control C, the selected object and attribute name, and paste it Control V into this expression field, and hit the equals, and paste again, hit the equal sign, and again, and hit the equal sign. Now let's go ahead and change the variable in the second segment to y and change the variable in the third segment from x to z. This makes x equal to y and y equal to z. And they're all equal to something. So now you'll tell the channels how quickly to animate the offset on the turbulence grid through these channels. Now after the equal symbol, type in time and a colon. This will set the offset to animate based on Maya's internal time node. This may be too fast for what I'm looking for though, so after time I'm going to go ahead and add a multiplication symbol and enter in 0.35 and hit the edit button. I'll go ahead and hit a play blast again. Now the expression is telling these attributes to animate the offset channel values at about one third the speed of time. And just change the values to experiment around and try setting expressions on any of the other channels to drive some customized motion. I'll pause it here and come back when it's done. Okay. Now we can see some nice motion on the leading edge as well as in the body. I'm really happy with this, but I'm feeling that the motion is moving too quickly, both in turbulence and in the way it's moving up in the height field. Select the field, and again under volume speed attributes, change along axis strength down from 5 to 2. And right click on one of the channels that has our expression driving the speed of the turbulence offset and hit edit. Now let's reduce it from 0.35 to 0.15 and hit the edit button. I'll do another play blast and come back when it's done. Now that looks great. I'm really happy with this. Now when you like what you have, cache out the simulation by selecting your end cloth coming up to end cache, create end cache. Be sure to set it to one file and hit create. Now strong word to the wise here, you should always cache out your simulation before you render it. Yes, it does take a bit more time, but when you spent the whole weekend rendering it and your render is jacked and your boss is pissed, you'll remember this word of wisdom. Now here's the same technique done on the model of a head. And keep in mind, you can do this on any polygonal object. Now I'm sure all sorts of possibilities are starting to go through your mind. But try using a uniform, a radial field, or even a Newton field instead. And once your simulation is cached, you might select all the faces and extrude them. And you might add a few nonlinear deformers like waves, sines, and bends. Or you might even want to emit particles from them and add expressions on those to animate them. You know, go nuts! 
Now you may find that you need a much higher level of control than animating numerous fields and collision objects, but this will take you a long way there. Stay tuned to the CG Bro 